Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today. Now, today's video is probably not on its normal, like, schedule, and there's a reason. <laughs> Normally, I do uh, bi-weekly Thursday videos, but this is probably not on a Thursday. Um, I have no idea when this is going live. <laughs> but basically what happened is I took a week off. That way I could decompress. My schedule's just been really hectic lately and I have not been getting what I've wanted out of it. So I took a week off and I am back now and we're just going to kind of change things up. So I'm pretty much just going to post videos when I have a video ready. I'm not going to have really a schedule to it. So if you guys want to keep track of when I'm posting, I highly recommend turning on notifications and stuff because it's going to be all over the place. <laughs> Now the main reason for this is I just, I want to get more in my videos, I want to do cooler things, and I just can't work with such a tight, like, time window, so I'm just going to open it up and go kind of crazy with it. But yeah, I just wanted to let you guys know that. Um, for today's video, what we're going to end up doing is a dragon that's kind of a bat dragon, but I want to throw in kind of a punk rock feel to it, just something fun to come back to. Anyways, let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to start on the clay pieces first. The first thing that I'm going to work on is the face. Now, I kind of want to have a nice mix of bat features along with something very dragon or fox-like. So I'm going to kind of go for a little bit longer than I would for like a normal bat. So I'm going to get my tin foil completely covered in clay and I'm going to figure out the basic shape that I want to work with. And then once I have that basic shape that I know what I want to do with, I can start adding our key features to the face. I'm going to start with the eyes. I have these glass pieces that I'm going to use to mark out where I'm going to add the glass eyes later. So I'm just going to figure out where I want those positioned, make sure they're nice and even, and then I can move on to adding more features like where the opening of the mouth is going to be and figuring out where we're going to add our nostrils. And then once I have those major features laid out, I can start adding more detail to the face. So one thing I thought would be really nice was to add a few wrinkles to the top of the snout. So I'm going to just kind of add some extra lines there and then just kind of dig in a little bit more to give them more dimension. And then I also wanted to add teeth to this face. I felt like having a few teeth sticking out in different directions would look really cool. So with the teeth, I started off with having a couple sticking upwards. I really liked it, but I wanted to add more, so I added a bunch in the back, kind of sticking more down, and then I added a few front teeth as well. I thought this just kind of filled the mouth a little bit better than adding just a couple sticking out here and there. And then after I had the teeth placed, I added a few extra pieces of strips of clay to kind of make the gums going around them and finishing off the shape of the mouth. After I had the shape of the mouth laid out, I added a bit more texture to the rest of the face. And then I'm just going to put this in the oven for probably about 45 to 55 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. Once our clay head is out of the oven and it's cool to touch, I can then swap out those glass pieces with the eyes that I want to use. I have these really cool pink ones that I made. And then what we're going to do is we're going to switch to our epoxy clay and start adding the clay around the glass eyes to make the eyelids.
Okay, so we're pretty much done with the clay face, but we are going to use our epoxy clay to make a couple claws. So I'm going to make a few claws to go at the tip of the wings, that way we have little grabby fingers for the wings, and then what we're going to do next is add them to a wireframe for the feet. So I'm going to be doing something different with the toes, I want them poseable. Um, what I'm mainly going to do right now though is just add the clay to the ends of all the wires for the toes and let that dry. Once all of our epoxy clay has finished curing on our wireframe for the feet, I'm then going to take a yarn. Now the body of my creature is going to be mainly white, so I'm just going to use white yarn for this. I'm going to glue it around the base of our claw, and then I'm going to wrap it all over the wire for the toe. So I'm going to wrap it multiple times until I get to the thickness that I want the toe to be. And then once we have all of the toes completely wrapped in yarn, I'm going to use some fabric glue to kind of lock them together so they're one solid thing. I found that this fabric glue is really useful for making poseable toes or antennae like this because it really locks the fabric together, or yarn in this case, but it still leaves it very poseable. So having it on a wire frame, you can still bend the wire and stuff and it still holds its shape quite well. Now for now, we're not going to work on the rest of the foot that will be kind of assembled when we put the doll together, but I do need to start on the painting, and since we're already on the toes, let's get those claws painted. So I'm aiming for accents of gold, so I'm going to be painting our claws gold, and then what we're going to do is move on to our clay head. Now like I was saying, the main color for our creature is going to be a white, so I'm going to start by primering my clay piece with white paint. And then our other key features besides the gold accent is going to be a little bit of pink, so I'm going to use that to kind of brighten up the face here and there, kind of add a bit more color to it. Now for the shadows and stuff, I don't want to go too, too dark, so I'm going to start kind of lighter with a grayish kind of brown color, and then I'll darken it as I go when I feel like it needs to be just a bit darker. So again, I don't want it to be very like just black shadows along with the white face. I want it to feel kind of soft. So I'm just going to use a bunch of grays, pinks, add more white, just try and balance out the colors that I want on the face, just the basic layout, and then we can go in with more refined detail. Like one thing that I wanted to add to add more of a rocker kind of feel to it was a star over one of the eyes. I thought that'd be really cool. So I ended up taking a pencil and roughly sketching out where I wanted it to be and then taking a more metallic pink to paint it in. Other than that, I'm going to be adjusting a few things here and there, and then I want to paint the teeth a gold. So I'm going to go over all of my teeth, and then once I'm happy with everything, I'm going to let the paint dry, and then we can peel off the excess paint that got on our glass eyes. Now normally when I'm done painting, I like to resin over everything to help protect the paint, so I'm going to lightly paint that over everything and set it off to the side to cure. Anyways, while we're waiting on that to cure, we can start on our sewing. We have a pretty decent amount of it. So here's the pattern that I'm going to be using. It's kind of a wyvern shaped body. We've got, of course, the main body, the back legs, and then the wings. And then we're also going to be adding some really large ears to the piece.
So the first thing that I'm going to work on are probably going to be the wings. I just kind of felt like getting them out of the way. So I'm going to start with a minky fabric. I'm going to have a left and right for each wing. I'm going to sandwich them together with the plush side inwards and I'm going to sew down the uh, top section of the wing to combine everything. I'm then going to flip that and then I have the same pattern cut out in a suede and I'm going to sandwich that between the two pieces of minky fabric. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark out where all the finger and arm sections of the wings are going to be. I'm just using a basic pencil. Normally this comes off of fabric pretty well if you just lightly go over it. And I'm going to mark out where all of that is and I'm going to follow those lines with my sewing machine. And once I've sewn all three layers together, I'm then going to take my scissors and remove all the excess minky fabric that is covering up the webbing of the wing. I'm going to have to do it on both sides. Once I'm done with that, I can stuff it and add everything to a wire frame for the wings. Now for the sides of the body, majority of the body is going to be this minky fabric that we've been using. But for the neck, I want it to be very fluffy. So I've got this white fur fabric that has pink tips, and I thought it'd be really pretty. So I'm going to be sewing these two sections together for the left and the right. Now the back legs are already connected one side of them to the main body, but we need to get the inside section. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just separate the fabric just a little bit more where the leg is and then we're going to sew the inside section to the other section that's already on the body. We're just going to go down the front of it and then once we have that sewn in place we're going to sew it to the other side where we ended up splitting the fabric. After that, we're going to need a belly piece to connect the sides of the body to. So the belly piece is also going to be part of the neck, so the first half of it will be the fur fabric and then it will be the minky. So we're going to sew those two pieces together and then we can take the side pieces and sew each one to each side of the belly piece. For the top of the dragon, we're going to have basically the same thing. We're just not going to add that yet until we start putting everything on our wire frame. So before we start doing that, we need to finish our last little bit of sewing, which are the ears. So for the ears, we're going to be having the outer section, the minky fabric, and the inside section are suede. So I'm just going to pin these two pieces of fabric together and sew around them. We'll flip that right side out and then I'm going to add a little bit of extra stitching. That way we can add a wire on the edges of our ears. That way we can make them poseable. So I'm going to get that done and then I'm going to run the wires through the ears. And then I realized that I wanted to add a little bit of extra detail to the mane going around the neck before we started putting it on the wire frame. So I've got that nice pink color, but I wanted to add more gold to it. So I have this kind of fluffy gold yarn, and I'm going to cut pieces to it and then sew it in place in the fur fabric. So I'm just going to keep adding that here and there throughout until I have enough to where I like it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get our wire frame that I've made. I made this ahead of time, and I didn't actually need to reinforce it too much. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by taking the fabric for the body and running the wires for the legs and wings through the holes for them. That way it's just kind of like sliding it over the wire frame. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our clay head and I'm going to glue it to the wire for the neck. So I'm going to attach it to that wire, let that dry a little bit, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take the fabric for the neck and glue it around the base of the head. And then when we get to the top, we have an opening, and then we'll add the extra bit of fabric that will go down the back of the dragon. Once we have that glued into place, what we're going to do is sew down the sides of the neck, lightly stuff it, 
and then when we get to where we're going to add the wings, we're going to slide those over our wire frame, and then we can stitch them in place on the body. So we'll end up going around that, and then we can continue to stuff and close up the body until we get to the very tip of the tail. once we have that stuffed and sewn, what we're going to do is start working on the back legs. So I need to add our wire frame for the feet to the rest of the wire frame. So I'm going to take those and wrap them together, and then what we can do is we can take the fabric for the feet and we're going to sew them around the bases of the toes. After that, I'm going to start sewing up the leg. So I'm going to start at the base where we have the toes and just work my way up. And as I go, I'm going to start stuffing the leg too. And we're going to do that to both legs until we get them completely closed up. So the body is basically done right now, but we do need to finish up the face. So we have those ears still. And what we're going to do is I have holes in the head already, and we're going to glue our wire frame for the ears into those holes. Then we can kind of stitch the base of the ears down in place, or glue them if we need to in different spots. Once the ears are in place, we can start finishing up the fur around them. So I'm going to add a little bit more of that pink fur fabric and just kind of clean up the edge. We might add a little bit more fur in the ears themselves too. Now before I do that, I do want to add a little bit more detail to the ears. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use different beads and stuff that I have that I think will work really well to make piercings. So I'm going to add a few different things here and there to kind of make it look like he has some gauges and different stuff like that. Okay guys, and here is our bat dragon. I had so much fun with this. I've been really enjoying making these large ears and I threw on some cool like earrings and stuff. Aren't exactly how those work, but they still look like the earrings that I was trying for. Now like all my other creatures that are not commissions, this will be on my website. So if you wanna buy him, give him a new home, check the links down below. Um, while you're down there, you'll also see like other links to art supplies and stuff. I probably need to update this. I don't know how many of them are still working, but we're going to fix that now that I have an actual functioning schedule <laughs> so far. But yeah, those are links to different art supplies that I like to use to make my art dolls. So if you're curious on the different creatures and stuff of what I use, you can check those out. Now, if you do buy anything through these links, it does help support the channel because they are affiliated links. Now before we go, just one more little reminder, schedule is very different now, so if you want to keep track of my videos, highly recommend turning on notifications. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, make sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!